Hello everyone, welcome. Today I am sharing with you how I have created a DIY house number planter box. This has been something I've been seeing in my Pinterest boards and something I've been um, wanting to create for a couple years now. So my husband and I hit the bullet and we decided to make it. So um, this is a collaboration with Jamie at Border Bananas, actually a challenge, and we are doing a Flippin' Friday. So taking some old things we had to create something new. And what we have used is our old shiplap boards that we had extra of when we DIY'd a shiplap wall in our living room. Check that video out in the description box if you're interested in that. But we took those boards and created this house number planter box, which I'm so excited. And it is very farmhouse, rustic, and of course a DIY. So I'm gonna walk you through the process and then show you the finished product at the end. Um, also make sure you check out the playlist in the description box as um, there will be many other people participating in this challenge. So we had extra five and a half inch shiplap boards from our DIY, like I mentioned earlier. So we, I thought, why not use those in another area? So we created this planter box. My husband cut them to the correct size. Now, we just kind of made up whatever size we wanted. We used three boards. I cut them, I want to say he cut them 12 inches long. And then he decided to put some supports in the back because to put it onto the siding in our, on our house, we needed extra supports. So we used some wood glue and then we used an air nailer that we borrowed from a friend. So there are some supplies that you will need for this project. Um, I suppose you could use a hammer and nails. The air nailer is just a lot quicker, a lot smoother, and it um, looks more finished, I think. So we did that, wood glued the middle support and then needed the outside supports as well. And of course, like I said, we wood glued and then nailed them in. And then he cut the planter box part too. So I want it like six inches deep and that way I can put some plants in there, of course, after that part is done. So we measured those, he cut them and then we wood glued and air nailed again. And we did make a mistake. Actually, my husband said it was his fault. He didn't measure for some reason and just cut them 12 inches again, wasn't thinking. And we had actually stuck those on there for the planter box. So it literally stuck out like that much from the planter box instead of that much. So that would have been a huge, huge area to plant and would have hung off of our siding and looked silly. So anyways, we had to take that off. So mistakes are very common when you're DIYing projects, even for people who are pretty handy like my husband. So um, he recut some, thankfully we had still had some extra shiplap left. And then he just used a piece of plywood for the bottom of the planter because the shiplap would have not fit correctly. He did cut a little groove too where the shiplap notch was so that it went in very smoothly and very well. So then glued that in, nailed that in, and then I went and bought some outdoor white spray paint because the shiplap was not for outdoor and I sprayed that thing down really well so it covers and I'm hoping it lasts at least for a couple seasons. So I think the white looks really good on there. I wanted white to make it pop and easier to spray paint white over white in my opinion. So um, I'm sure you could spray paint any color you want. If you want a pop of color on your planter box, that would be really beautiful too. It's really up to you to decide. I just went with white. And then we actually used our old house numbers that were rusting and kind of falling off the front of our house. And I spray painted those black with an outdoor black spray paint. And then I nailed those in and I couldn't decide if I wanted the numbers at an angle, if I wanted them straight across, but this is what we went with. And I think that's going to work well so that the flowers are visible and not growing up into it as well. So then we hung it on the siding and I got a little liner of just a trash bag, honestly. I did poke a few holes in it so there's a little ventilation. Put my potting mix soil in there and then just put some plants in there that will hang over. Um, I used a few little snapdragons that I had. These are just some plants I got from our local 
greenhouse. So I think this adds such a beautiful touch to the front of our house, much better than the shoddy looking numbers we just had up there when we bought the house and hadn't changed for several years because we lived in this place for about almost four years now. So this is something that you can do. You may have to borrow tools. Sometimes I know you can rent air nailers. Um, the saw we already had on hand from other projects. So it would cost quite a bit if you have to buy those things, but borrow, borrow, borrow. That's what I want to say. But I hope this was fun to watch for you, that it inspired you to do something creative and flip something. If you're new to my channel, I would love to have you join my YouTube community. I do videos such as these. I do a lot of simple living, thrifted, and homemaking and motherhood videos. So definitely hit that subscribe button if you like what you see. Give it a thumbs up for DIYs. Also, check out that playlist so you can go be inspired by all the other people who are participating in Jamie's Flippin' Friday Challenge. So I hope you are having a blessed and wonderful day. And I will talk with you in my next video next week. Alright, bye guys.